the Romanian IAR-39. Really cool, coming up next. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies and welcome back to all my great subscribers and if you're new to this channel and you like aircraft model unboxing videos, please remember to like and subscribe and click that notification button right down there so that whenever I make a new video, you get notification as to when to see it. And we do a lot of videos on this channel like model aircraft, model cars, Warhammer models, sci-fi, monsters, and many other cool unboxings. So you don't want to miss any of those. So remember to like and subscribe, click that notification bell. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce to you one of our first fully built in Romania aircraft kits. And this is an IAR-39, which is a special type of bomber that first saw, saw it <laughs> in 1937 this is when the plane was produced and when it came out into the skies so without further ado let's go down and see what's in the box and throughout this video if you look up above in here there'll be little uh little links to follow with videos and stuff all about this airplane so check those out as you check out the unboxing so without further ado uh, let's go down and see what's in the box now welcome back down to our unboxing table where we get to look at the Acer IAR-39. Now this model kit is a depiction of the Romanian Air Force lightweight bombers that they came out with in 1937, I believe. And what's cool about this kit is it contains injected plastic parts, injected and vacuform canopy, decals, photo etched, and resin parts. So if you're unfamiliar with photo etch and resin parts, we can actually see what's inside here. But I want to show you the back of the box here, where it shows a couple of cool books on these planes. There's the Air Magazine and La Aviation Romani, which is, of course, the Romanian Air Force that's in French, I believe. Yeah, this model kit is a French company. Okay, anyway, so they show three variations of this plane. Now, what's cool about this, the first one here is uh, early Romanian. Um, it's got the King Michael's cross there, a small one with the yellow stripe. Now, these were identifications for when Romania was allies with uh, Germany. They were part of the Axis powers in World War II at the beginning of the war. So the Germans painted any of their Axis partners planes. They had to have the yellow band so that when they were flying they knew who was an enemy and who was an ally. So they had the yellow bands. Well in some squadrons, as war progressed, they found that it was hard to see, you know, who was who as things are going by really fast. So to further this, they painted the cowling yellow so that it was uh, a lot brighter. And they made the King Michael Cross a bit bigger as well. And then after the coup d'etat, when Romania changed sides and joined the Allies, the Romanians painted over the yellow from the nose and went back to the green. They got rid of the King Michael cross and they put on the original World War I style Romanian roundel and they went to the white stripe so that the Allies could identify the planes. So that's a bit of the Romanian air history for you. And then of course they show the top view here with the dark green with the King Michael crosses which would be you know related to this plane. If you wanted this one your cowl goes yellow, right? And there's the undercarriage, and you can see the bomb payload that was under here. Small bombs. Oops, and there are quite a lot of them. So, let's turn this box lid over again. And I'm going to just do a quick open for right now. Step one is getting all the stuff out of the box. And of course we have our instruction sheet, which we'll look at in just a minute. And we've got the sealed bag with all our parts in it. 
And what's interesting is every part in here is in this sealed bag. So there's all the resin bombs and things. Comes in a little Ziploc. There's the canopies. There are the decals. And of course the plastic bits. So let's just move this out of the way and look at our first topic, which is the instructions. Yes, before we get into these instructions, I just realized I made a mistake here. Azure is actually not a French company. It is made in the Czech Republic. I wish I had have seen that on the side of the box before I said French. But what threw me off was that La Aviation de Romanie and all that stuff is in French. And then it says here about going to Paris. So I kind of made a mistake there, but this kit is from the Czech Republic. So, without further ado, let us go and look at the instruction sheet now. And again, this instruction sheet is in black and white, which is quite common in instructions. And it's got a write-up in French, British, and, nicely enough, Romanian. Which is really good. And tells you the whole history of the plane right there. And then if we open it up, this is a booklet type instruction sheet. We can see all our plastic parts here and the photo etch parts. There's a piece of film in here for your instrument cluster. And then polyurethane parts, which of course are your resin. And that will coincide with the parts here will be shown there. So if you're missing anything, you know what it is. And you can contact Azure for some replacement parts. Okay, so getting inside the kit here, they show, of course, how the pieces all go together. It's quite an interesting type of frame arrangement here. There's your seat, and it looks like it's got all the components for um, full operations of the ailerons and rudders in there. Quite a detailed cockpit. Ah, that's your tail machine gun there. So this frame is actually... Oh, it's all part of the uh, interior. So there's your seat there, your cockpit. And then you notice this is actually upside down. I think. No, maybe not. I don't know. But it is interesting. <laughs> okay. I'll have to build the model to find out how it goes together. All right, so here it is here. And you can see that you've got that framework going inside your airplane. And then all of this. And that's how it would look in the back. So there's your tail gun there. I guess this piece that's shown under here is some kind of counterbalance or the Oh, the rear seat for the... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So that would be the rear seat upside down for the machine gunner. And then, of course, here we've got our windows, which are interesting because they're on the side here. So the pilot can look down uh, and to the left or right to see where to drop the bombs down below. And then here we've got our rear stabilizers, and it shows you the struts, which one goes where. The 14.1 millimeter strut will go right there, and the 3.8 millimeter strut will go this way. Make up the triangle for supports for your rear stabilizers. And let's, uh, there we go. Get take in the full scope of the instruction sheet. Now here's the wing going together. It's a two-piece bit and our big gigantic canopy it says you can put it on now or wait till you get to step 17 which is kind of interesting and then uh, there's the engine and the cowling going together and it gives you some information on your wing alignment so you don't have this one sticking out over here or something weird it's always a tough one getting biplanes aligned perfectly unless you make a jig okay and then there's our wheels landing gear going on underneath. This is a fixed landing gear, so it's not retractable. And then there's our photo etched, or our resin bombs going on the payloads there. See how many there are. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
12, 12 per side, 24 bombs. That's quite a capacity, even for little ones. And then there you go. Now you can drop your canopy on for step 17. You put your propeller on. Well, that would be interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so how does that work? You got the cowl there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, oh, I see how it would go. So your cowl is there. And then... Oh, I guess you can't uh, spin your propeller. All right. Well, it's a fixed propeller arrangement. So you can't run around the room going whoosh, 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 on the propeller and making it spin, pretending you're in the air. That's a shame. <laughs> okay, anyway. So there's your paint scheme. They don't really have too much as some of the other companies do. It just has light blue on the bottom, dark green on the top, and yellow on the nose. Ah, this is the regular IAR-39. Then you have the Eastern Front, so Operation Barbarossa. Going on there, the colors there. And then after the coup d'etat in September 1944, when they joined the Allies in that scheme there. And then of course on the back we have some other limited run plastic kits, so make sure you look for these on the internet or at model kit shows. You've got the uh, helicopter there and the seaplane and a bunch of these other cool ones. The Newport Delange NID-72, Dewinton D-337-33, or 373-376, and many more. Now we'll look at our deck hall sheet here. And uh, it's still in the plastic. I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to lose this little film. But this is the instrument panel right there. You can see some of the gauges. It goes behind the instrument cluster, which is an interesting touch. And then we have some escadrille numbers, squadron numbers here in white. Sort of hard to see uh, through the camera. Then our King Michael cross. And this is not quite as nicely defined as in some other kits. And in fact, this is supposed to be red, yellow, and blue. A navy blue, or a darker blue. But it sure does look black. I'd almost say the registry, the color registry is a little bit not quite correct, but that might just be my opinion on it. And the other reason why I'm leaving this together is because if we turn the decal sheet over, here we have our photo etched bits right there. See some of the struts and other goodies. There's the instrument panel. So you get a nice photo etched instrument panel and then on the other side you get the little film of the uh, instruments. So you glue that onto the back. Now photo etching of course we'll use crazy glue. And I always find a little bit of trouble where the connection points are to get those dead flat because you're talking about a very thin piece of brass here. So if you guys know how to get the little connection points off and make it nice and flat, let us know in the comments below because that's one of the challenges I have with building these kits is trying to get that perfect. So please let us know down below. Now we'll move on to our plastic components, and we're going to start with the um, sheet that has the cowling and, of course, our frameworks in it. As you can see, there's a lot of frame on here. And there's the uh, seats and the floorboards. There's the seat there. And the spot where the tail gunner might be which is still kind of mysterious to me. Oh, there's his seat. Oh, you just got a wooden board and a little piece of canvas on there <laughs> to sit on. <laughs> wow, that must have been irritating to be up sitting on that for like a long time in all those aerial combats. Wow. But as you can see, there's all the little struts and runners. Quite an interesting little arrangement there. 
And now let's go on to our second uh, plastic sprue, which contains the fuselage, the wings, the stabilizers, and the wheels. And of course there's those cutouts where the glass would go in. There and there, and it gives you the little little hump here for these lower wings to glue on. And you can notice a couple little injector pin type marks on here. Actually, those are not injector pin marks. You may think they are, but what they are is the bottom of the struts, I do believe. Because there's no alignment holes here, so you have to glue those struts on somehow. But yeah, I think that's the understanding that they're actually supposed to be going through the wing. Because here we have two, and then there's two more, and two more, and two more. And that's where they those struts would align. So yeah, don't sand those off. <laughs> you can see here we've got some nice, maybe you can see it, got some nice uh, ribs in here and there's also some rivet detail. The camera doesn't seem to want to pick it up too much. And then of course we have our, our um, air louvers and holes to get some of that off the engine. Now, speaking of the engine, where is it? That is interesting. Aha, here we go. Now we have our resin components. And these come in a nice little Ziploc bag so that you can store them together. And let's take these out for a minute. Well, okay. I don't need to review every little bomb on here. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. I got three out of the six out of the bag. Let's take a look at these first. So here we have our bombs and they are in racks of four. So you'd need to cut them off of the bottom there and just clean them up. They're pretty neat. They look like little rockets. <laughs> little V2 German rockets or something. That's bombs. Those are the bomb. Okay. And we have some resin machine guns here and these might be a bit of a trick but there are some very nice details on them you can see like I don't know how well you can see it but there's the trigger and the handle down there so quite quite cool and there is one of the cowls I suppose for pilot so the film would go in here and then the photo etch would go over the top maybe this is an alternative if you don't want to use the photo etch I'm not quite sure however it's included so that's always nice and what do we have here this is the control yoke I believe for you know push it forward and you go down push it back you go up that's made out of resin as well and our last component is, of course, the radio engine. Which has some very nice detail on there. There's these two little things sticking up. It's kind of cool. If you guys know what those are, please write in the comments below. Because they don't appear on any of the other cylinders. Alright, so that is the look at the resin. And we only have one component left now, and that is the clear parts, which are in this bag. <laughs> so let's open these up with the old scout pocket knife here. This is a nice, nicely sealed off bag. Okay, so taking these out, whoops. Ah, oh, this is interesting. You have a plastic canopy molded out of clear styrene. There's those little side windows and another window on the back. You also have a vacuum-formed canopy. So that's kind of interesting. Not quite sure the reasoning on that. But at any rate, you've got a backup in case you uh, are trying to paint these little things, the little frames in there and you slip with your paintbrush or if I don't know you just 
you know, scratch this one up or something. I'm not too sure the reasoning on that. Vacuum forming is a bit lighter though. So, that will be the conclusion of our review of the Azure IAR39. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video review where you got to see the Azure Romanian IAR39 right here on Monster Hobby's What's in the Box. And if you like these model airplane unboxing videos, don't forget, before you leave here, to click that little red subscribe button and click the notification bell that appears right beside that button. So whenever I do another What's in the Box, say that you are one of the first people that gets to know that the video came out. And if you want to say, like, thank you, Trevor, for making these great videos, spending all that time showing us what's in the box and, you know, making sure that everybody gets to see all your model kits. And yeah, you want to make a little contribution? Hey, I just opened up a Patreon account and you can become a patron like these two great people right here have done. And if you become a patron, you also get your name in those credits too, which is really cool. And there's also some other great bonuses there, like depending on the amount that you want to con contribute, <laughs> You can get stickers, you can get t-shirts, you can get a special monster pencil, all kinds of cool stuff. So go over to my Patreon account, which is in the links down below. Click there and hey, give us some support. It's kind of like a tip jar. You know, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't, well, I understand, you know. Now, something cool for you, all you guys out there. If you want to see some of the other unboxings, please check them out here, here, here and here <laughs> and enjoy those videos and tell me which ones you like in the comments below and until next time hey keep it up in the skies we'll talk to you later bye